Grüß dich! Das ist eine Frage jetzt. Die mir von Dinner. Äh, uh, Queen. Qualität ist Grüß dich. Method. Und die Quantität ist Grüß dich. Method. Some procedures you use will be mostly qualitative in nature, but other procedures you use will go to uh, quantitative methods. The extreme side of uh, the quantitative methods are purely experimental research designs. So all the research we will be engaging will vary on that container. Uh, when I'm using the same container, I think it will be a You see the grip? Yeah? See, what I'm saying is that the research Varies from the point where it is descriptive to the other extreme where it is experimental. Okay. You, 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 you cannot just break it in the middle side. This, this is all descriptive. This is all descriptive. No. Within this container, we will be following various types of research. Some towards that direction, some to this towards this direction. So the uh, uh, in that way. Descriptive research is basically a design to obtain information. Uh, Describe the current phenomenon, the status of the situation. Describe it. And the 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 the, 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 the issue here is to be able to describe uh, the situation. There is no control in such studies. What? the quantitative research study will usually have to control involved. Don't worry about that, we'll come back to that technology in more detail later on. Uh, so uh, the studies in descriptive uh, research would not very much worry about testing hypothesis. They are concerned about describing the situation. To explore the situation. For example, if we went back to our business studies, for example, SMEs, the question why are SMEs not helping people to get out of poverty will be pushing you more to the experimental. Whilst a question like the, what is the situation about SMEs in our What is the situation? What is the nature? What is the nature of SMEs in our That question is begging for describing the SMEs in our right? So you you go out to just maybe survey and you describe. That. The most of the SMEs are involved in the agricultural enterprise. All these SMEs are using very little capital. All these SMEs, the people who are doing them, don't seem to have enough knowledge or how to do this. They are just describing this question, right? But if you go to the question, why are they not making profits? Now we are going a little 
beyond just description. Because now we want to, to investigate reasons why. There, we will go in more in terms of quantitative research. And in, in, that, in such studies, you could go to the extent of having control. Well, when I'm saying control, you could design your study in such a way that you have a group of SMEs. Let's say your argument was that the, these people who are implementing SMEs uh, do not have enough knowledge on how to implement SMEs. So you could have one group of SMEs who you are going to train. Okay? And then you start a way that the training will make them make more profits. And you will have, on the other hand, another group of SMEs where you don't do anything for them. At the end, when you are assessing, if this group shows that they, they are making more profits, they are moving out of poverty, better than this group, then you can argue without the uh, doubt to say, because of my training, which I brought to this group, is that group is to make money to become rich, to get out of poverty. Because those who are not trained here will become rich. And so this is the control group. This one is the experimental. And a study designed in this way will be towards this time. Any difference? And we get a little bit by the end of the point. The areas are not able to dream where you need to be following the area. Any difference? Yeah. Yeah, Lord. Lord, where are you going to be? Okay. I started, I started off by saying that the description studies are designed to describe the situation which is existing. You know that the Malawi is promoting SMEs. You know that they are doing that because they want to get people out of poverty. But you don't know what is happening among, among the SMEs. So you are going to learn what is happening among the SMEs. For example, what type of business are they doing? How much money do they invest in those businesses, uh, uh, what knowledge do they have uh, in terms of doing those businesses, you are just trying to play so that you can describe what is out there in the situation you are dealing with. That's the decision you start. But if you go to the extreme saying, these people, despite the efforts we are doing, they are not getting out of poverty. And you cannot make that statement unless you have information from literature. But the reason to which are making them not get out of poverty is what we don't know. So I'm going to investigate why are they not getting out of poverty. Now that question is begging for deeper investigation. And the, the sort of deeper investigation here will be quantitative in nature. And that's why I was uh, giving an illustration here on one way of investigating that problem would be for you to go come up with two samples of people who are doing SMEs, right? One sample, you go there. Let's say you are dealing with the question, maybe it's because of lack of knowledge that they are not making profits. Just for example. So, you take one group, train them, 
addressing the problem of knowledge yes? by training them and see whether after training them their performance in their businesses has improved they are becoming richer whilst on the other hand you have another group another sample which should not be trained and the purpose is at the end of the training at the end of the investigation we should be able to assess whether these people okay. sorry I can't hear my my reading is out He wants to, to to show that we are doing some business here serious. So, <laughs> so I'll say for the for the experimental group, we will actually do an intervention to change their situation. And the intervention here would be training well to see whether the same will help them improve their profitability. And then you have another group which you don't train. So at the end of the intervention, you study whether these people are making more income than these people. Okay? And if at the end of it, you really find that these people, their income on the average is the five million they eat, they eat. their income on the average is five hundred thousand. You can ask them without a uh a big to say, my children help these people. Now, why do you answer your question? So, it is started that this way. is excellent. Whilst when we are just discussing what is the nature of the SMEs we are doing in Malawi, in this meeting. So, we are starting to follow the safety uh, that we talk about the safety that we so get to what about the safety that we can take. Well, when you are saying quantitative, say it. So it's kind of like you can do this. Yes. You can actually say, I'm going to use the experimental designs. People, people who know, who know that we're talking about quantitative. Yes. Discretive yeah. is by name. Yeah, quantitative. <laughs> Is just but as I say, they are for dinner. So you will find that some studies will have the characteristics of being discreet, but on the other side also being Established 
positive effect of the relationship. And when I'm saying positive effect of the relationship, we establish whether um, the failure to get up out of all parties is because of the lack of knowledge. And if you do this type of study, you can say, ah, these people are failing to get up out of all parties despite our interventions. Because they don't do. After giving them the knowledge, they improve their performance. Okay? So they call for not getting out of poverty. That is right. Uh, and in those the experimental studies, you as a researcher will be expected to propose. Hypothesis. In our example, the hypothesis would be people are getting out of poverty despite our interventions because they don't know. Okay? <coughs> that would be your hypothesis. But you cannot make that statement unless you have adequate information from the literature. That's why we literature we talk about is very, very delicious. Actually, when Thank you. 
here that you as a researcher, you introduce changes in the natural phenomena. Because these groups initially they were all not trained but you as a researcher, you have introduced training here. So you are creating change here. And leaving this one unchanged. And you are assessing whether this change is causing a difference in your patient data. So that's what I'm saying there. And the, when you are talking about the experimental studies, there are basically two types of variables in this. One we call independent variable, and the other one we call dependent variable. In my example again, training and it's an independent variable. You can introduce it, and you can decide not to introduce it in some case. So you can vary that variable independently. But the, the variation you are getting in that variable will influence variation. You are showing that it will influence variation on a dependent variable. It is built up from the SMEs. Okay? So you are saying, if you train them, their income will increase. If you don't train them, their income will not change. So it can become dependent. It depends on what you are doing. Am I making sense? Huh? Is it very positive? Is it more better? I think we have to move to Sangalasa. My dependent variable here. Is it not influencing income? Yeah. So, uh, if, if it, 
if there is the, a relationship between the trading and the income, obviously when you trade, income should increase. Then you can say, yeah, these things are related. And because they are related, if you want to improve incomes of people, then people have done this experiment and that is expected. So, that is the Okay. I presented this just in, in terms of the question text so that we know uh, what are the things of study, what are the things of marriage, and we are talking about the experience of study, some of the crucial definitions are those of talk about the issue of control, experimental group, independent variable, Dependent variable, those should be common language and English. Okay? The, some of those uh, are not uh, very clear among us. Then this is the time you should say those issues now. I think uh, for my unit, one presentation. That's about this. Now we can start talking about the unit two. Yeah? Oh, you are two. Unit 2, uh, 
science and in this approach we should be able to describe various sources of knowledge and in that description we should be able to accept the strengths and the weaknesses of all the sources of knowledge we should be able to describe uh, find what is the scientific approach and we also be able to talk about theory when people talk about the theory what do they mean uh, so in terms of the objectives talk about uh, we expect us to be able to achieve Sources of knowledge. <coughs> there are several sources of knowledge. Obviously, the research is the one of the major sources of knowledge, but there are several sources of knowledge uh, that we, we, we go back to in the history we can talk about. Uh, we, as professionals, experts in our uh, areas of specialization, we will be expected to have a, a set of knowledge and skills that should help us make decisions uh, uh, about the nature uh, how to address the problems we experience. Uh, and people who assume that the, the decisions we make are based on information from people who know. So, if that is the case, we must be look at the various sources of knowledge. How, how do we get to know what we know? One of the sources of knowledge is experience. Most of the things we know, we have known them from experiences we have had in life. But sometimes things cannot be learned through experience alone. Uh, experience of this one limitation. Sometimes we reach for Israel. But how do we do with this? And then you 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 say the people who know, who are in authority, who are more knowledgeable of the How do I deal with this? And that is another source of knowledge which is part of authority. Sometimes we'll say, ah, how has this been done in society? Uh, how have people done this? Then you're going uh, into the traditional ways of doing things. That is also the source and then the scientific approach, which is, we want to be spending more time talking about it here. But before we talk about the, the scientific approach, let's just look at these other sources of knowledge. What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? Starting with the experience. Some limitations. 
the strong source of knowledge and the dead source of knowledge. But Sometimes people can be experiencing the same thing, but they learn different things from the same thing. Obviously, as we are going through our rest of the year, some people are getting a lot of money, some people are getting less money, depressed. <laughs> but we are experiencing the same thing. Okay. Depends on what angle we are coming from, uh, what is our background, what have we focused on in this experience we are doing, can we actually make us different from whatever we are in from that situation. And some things cannot be learned very well using experience alone. Yeah, of course, there are other ways of learning to understand some phenomena. Uh, the type of rays we get from the sun, we know that it, as it is shining, there are different types of rays we are getting it. But uh, I think we, from experience, we cannot be able to explain it all. Oh, this type of rays. It's like, no. Go deeper to understand those things. So, uh, all the experience is a very good source of knowledge if it has limitations and that is make us uh, not learn everything the way we should learn. And when we talk about authority, basically my usage of the term authority. I'm talking about people who are in the know-how, people who are, who are more knowledgeable, and you can trust those. I use the example of lawyers. The we have an illegal issue which we want to know more legally. Uh, they like the people tend to a lawyer, please say. In that case, if there is a medical situation, a peculiar disease we have come across, and then we don't know how to deal with it, they like to tell to the medical doctor because we know this is a norm and can help to explain this thing to us. So, uh, authority can be a source of knowledge. And uh, of course, as we are talking about uh, people who are in the know-how, authority also can refer to people who have power. Uh, if the president today decides that if this is the way this thing will be done, then if one of us will be forced to follow what he has said, because he is the authority. So what he has said, who will be known to give up the fact how he has known and decided that things should be done that way, maybe that's not what I have to say. But he Okay? Uh, so, authority is a source of knowledge we can use. For us to do things. But also, even um, has its own strengths and weaknesses. Whilst we, we can use authority uh, to generate knowledge for ourselves, but there are some weaknesses associated with that. Uh, assuming that because he is the president and he has said this should be 
done this way. That doesn't mean that it, 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 doing, doing things that way is the right way to do things. Because after all, we can still ask the question how do you do more? So, like in the villages, maybe most of us have to go to the villages. But I remember when I was a young kid, uh, the older people used to tell us, oh, don't eat eggs. Because if you eat eggs, you will not grow it. And we used to believe that that's correct. It is the same thing. But if you have any scientifically proven that the eggs are actually very helpful for young kids as they are growing up, if they eat eggs, nutritionally, they will improve their food. But we used to believe what the old people were telling us in those days. So, because the old people were in authority, they have said it, and because they have said it, you would not dare to just take a day and start eating without their authority to say it's quiet. But the memory was actually wrong from what we have scientifically proven today. So, uh, we, we, we tend to be that time to rely on the authority alone as the, the source of knowledge in society. Unless we, we are sure that that knowledge is correct. So that's what I'm saying here. That information which we are using from authority is correct. Similar to authority, the other source of knowledge is tradition, uh, where uh, people ask, but how do you deal with this issue? How is this thing normally done? How do you normally solve this problem? And people who have dealt with the problem Previously, starting now, uh, okay. In our society, this is how we do this. In our society, this is how we do this. If you find people uh, on the way they are walking, and you find people discussing, you see, it's proper for you to say, only, that's not a yes, <laughs> but based on So, uh, the vision also has a witness that some of the things which are believed to be the right things in, the, in our tradition have actually been proven wrong. Uh, just like I was talking about the, the example of the egg. We don't allow it. They have it to go. <laughs> to discourage kids from eating too many eggs because if they eat too many eggs, we won't have chicken. <laughs> but it was the source of knowledge we use it. it was the wrong noise. So, experience, yes, is the source of knowledge, but at this only discussion. Uh, authority, yes, is a good source of knowledge, but at this point, uh, witnesses, similar tradition is the source of knowledge, but has also its own witnesses. Questions about their sources of knowledge of this part. Yeah,
such a big thing because the, I emphasize the importance of literature. Right? As you are reading in that literature, some of the things you find in the literature will be based on experience. Some of the things will be based on authority. Some of the things based on tradition. And uh, contrary to what uh, we have been doing up to now, because if you are much wrong, you can challenge me. So all the classes have been taking, eh? The lecturers have been recommending books to us. Right? Yes. And when you take the book and start reading from the book, you are sure that this is correct. But then, uh, is it in the addition of that it is your point? Aha! I'm covering this thing so that when you are reading those things, you should read them with a critical mind. Because you're going to be using that for doing your own research. Now, if you pick something which is wrong and you assume that this is correct, your work is going to be. So we should learn to be critiquing uh, whatever sort of knowledge we get. Uh, and that's the whole thing about us being scientists. We don't just accept everything as the truth. The only thing we accept without question is the Bible. The others raise a question. And be convinced that yes, this is correct.